Hello everyone, this is Gogi from Gogi.in and here is the unboxing and review of Carbon S1 Titanium. This is a quad core handset powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon processor. This is the box pack, the S1 Titanium and as you can see here it's 1.2 GHz quad core, dual SIM handset powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon chipset. This handset is priced at rupees 10,200. The specifications on the box pack 1.2 GHz quad core, Android Jelly Bean, 4.4 inch IPS QHD screen, 1600 mAh battery, 3G support, Wi Fi, 1GB RAM, 4GB internal storage, 5MP rear autofocus camera, front camera, GPS, Bluetooth, micro SD card support, light proximity and accelerometer sensors, dual SIM support. Let's open up the box pack. Inside the box, you will find the Carbon S1 Titanium handset. We'll have a look at this later. The battery of uh, 1600 mAh capacity, power adapter with USB, USB to micro USB cable, the standard earphone that you get with the Carbon handsets, the S1 user manual, warranty card and service center list and the screen guard and here is the carbon s1 the handset has got a very good look the rear side is glossy black as you can see the front side is black the sides are silver gray texture and uh, the rear side is glossy black Four touch sensitive buttons on the front side, on the top the in call speaker, the front camera and the sensors. The power button on the top side and next to it is the 3.5 mm audio jack. On the bottom side you will find the mic and the micro USB port. On the right side there is the volume rockers. The speaker out on the rear side, the carbon logo and the 5MP autofocus rear camera with LED flash. Let's open up the battery compartment. This is a dual SIM handset, the SAR value as mentioned here. You can see the two SIM slots and the micro SD card slot. I have inserted the SIM, the card, the battery and the back cover. Let's power on this device. This handset runs on the Jelly Bean OS. What you see is the Carbon Smart S1 Titanium logo, some graphic and this is the home screen. As you can see here the backlit touch buttons. The performance is good. It's pretty fast. Touch is smooth. Responsive. Here are the top menu options, a little different than what we usually see on the other handsets. USB tethering, portable Wi-Fi hotspot and Bluetooth tethering is supported. In brightness, you have normal brightness option and dynamic brightness option. There is proximity calibration as well as G-Sensor adjust. The internal storage for apps is around 1.41 GB of which 1.29 GB is available and the internal storage space is 1.4 GB available. Internal storage free 1.3 GB of the 1 GB RAM you get around 564 MB free and here are the pre-installed apps browser calculator calendar contact download DSP manager file browser flipboard Google plus gallery Kingsoft office maps messaging messenger music navigation phone settings play store Google talk sound recorder voice search WhatsApp and YouTube. The model number and Android version 4.1.2 these are the GPS settings. When composing a new message the interface is a little different you can change the orientation and there is the attachment options. I have loaded my website and will try zooming in as you can see there is a mild rendering lag which is ok. System information it's MSM8625 hardware ARMv7 processor clocked at 1.2 GHz it's quad core MSM8625 hardware 
960 by 540 pixel resolution and the GPU is Adreno 203. And here are the sensors, accelerometer, magnetic orientation, light and proximity sensor. As you can see the magnetic sensor is not working. The quadrant score is 4550 which is impressive. The antutu score is 10966. Nina Mark 2 is 40.1 FPS. Linpack single thread 50, 50, 51. Multithread 107, 103, 107. This handset supports 5 point multi touch. Now let's check out the camera of 5 MP resolution. The interface again is a little different here. These are the options. You can click images and shoot videos with both the cameras active. As you can see here, uh, this is similar to what we experience in video chats or during video call. Let's move on to the video mode. As you can see here, the default video is set to 720p resolution. That is the maximum. Even being a quad core, you can record videos only up to 720p resolution. I'm now going to record a video and we'll play it in MX player. Okay, here is the MX player and I'm going to tools, properties, and as you can see the video is recorded in 720p resolution at 30 frames per second. Here are some more setting options. Face detection, guidelines, when you switch on the guideline you can see the lines here. And uh, there is the red eye reduction option. You even have the video snapshot option. The good news is that the Nova 3 game does work on this handset but the bad news is that uh, it's not very smooth. As you can see here, it is lagging. The Carbon Titanium S1 is probably the cheapest quad core handset available for Rs 10,290 for now. This handset cannot record or play 1080p videos but it can record 720p videos however the quality is not that good. If you are looking for a quad core handset this is not the one you should be investing in. For full reviews, sample images and videos, visit my website kogi.in.